Hey guys, finally we get to see a little bit of the debris pulled up from the Titan wreckage and I believe what happened was where they bonded the titanium and the carbon fiber um, together and how they did it is crazy and the fact that this sub went down dozens of times already to the depths that it did is astonishing. First, I'm going to show you guys real quick two key videos that I found um, that will absolutely explain what exactly happened and corroborate it with what we just seen from the little debris that we just seen today. It's going to show you uh, exactly what I mean. Watch this. Um, titanium is the common. There's some, some high strength uh, carbon steels that are used. I think the Russians use those. But uh, titanium uh, is. Um, Let's put it this way. Carbon fiber is three times better on a strength to buoyancy basis than titanium. And underwater, that's what you care about. It's not strength to weight, it's strength to buoyancy. And yet no one had done that. And there are uh, certifying or semi-certifying agencies, the uh, Pressure Vessels for Human Occupation Committee that uh, handles hyperbaric chambers and submarines. You have the SubSafe program in the, uh, in the Navy. These programs are uh, over the top in their rules and regulations, but they had nothing with carbon fiber. So we had to go out and, uh, and work on that. And one of the things I learned is, you know, when you're outside the box, it's really hard to tell how far outside the box you really are. Uh, and we were pretty far out there. So we have a, a carbon fiber hull, it's five inches thick, uh, and titanium uh, domes on the end. What you see here is a mock-up of what he just said his design is. The carbon fiber with the two titanium ends. It is destroyed, and it's destroyed where the, the carbon fiber meets with the titanium. So that's the weak point. Now with this in mind, let's check out how they bonded those two together. And you'll see why this imploded. Today is a critical uh, joining of the titanium and the carbon fiber. That seal needs to be uniform and small, but not too small. Level, do a good cleaning, check the surface out, and he will check measurements. Between the two components, um, really what's holding them together and allowing them to move together is the glue. And so you want nice, even uh, movement. It's the glue holding the family together, and we want to make sure it's right. It's pretty simple, but if we mess it up, there's not a lot of recovery. The glue is very thick, so it's not like Elmer's glue. It's like uh, peanut butter. All the things to shortcut. You figure anything over thirty? That's pretty low. I really want to highlight this for you guys. What you're looking at right here is the inside of that titanium ring. This area is the only area that is grasping on to the carbon fiber hull. This is the point of no return right here. I'm good already north-south, I just east to west. Yes, so that will be the pressure vessel. It'll go to 4,000 meters. It'll be the deepest diving carbon fiber sub ever built. When it goes to 4,000 meters, it'll be the only one out there. I'm gonna be the first guy in the sub, so we will see. I feel like anyone in this last video should never touch another submersible ever again. That's number one. Number two, all of this could have been prevented had he stuck with the data on deep diving submersibles and not made up his own idea of physics, right? The reason why spheres are used is because it distributes the pressure evenly on the outside. A pill-shaped submersible, the, the pressure will focus on the longer ends and not the end caps. So that will force the end caps to pop off, right? If the carbon fiber is being squeezed on all sides, but you know, that will cause a bow in the middle of the carbon fiber. And then the edges of the carbon fiber that are inside of that titanium ring that we talked about will only rip and tear at that because the titanium is not going to flex like the carbon fiber will. I'm not even an engineer or a submersible builder and I can de determine this on my own. 
it is absolutely asinine that engineers would look at this and entertain it and even continue to build it. I just think it really is a, a sad thing that happened. Rest in peace to all these guys. And I feel like their deaths will not go in vain. It'll actually lead to uh, regulations, which will keep people safer in the future. Let me know what you guys think in the comments.